So we're going to continue to uh, expand upon this diagram that we've been working on for the past few modules. I'm going to try to show uh, how shelling really revolutionizes um, the whole Kantian approach, so much so that um, some have even said that he uh, you know, contradicts much of what Kant uh, tried to do to set philosophy on a new course. Um, on the other hand, it's clear that Schelling deeply understood and sympathized with the Kantian and Fichtean um, transcendental approaches to philosophy, but he also uh, pointed out certain weaknesses, um, in particular uh, that having to do with a connection to a real natural world, um, to an organic and living natural world, which he felt like transcendental idealism um, annihilated and thereby sort of uh, cut itself off from its own living ground. So you remember for Kant, you've got the mind with its categories of understanding that allows it to know objects in the phenomenal realm of space and time, phenomenal or apparent nature, and that uh, beyond the phenomenal realm is this noumenal realm. We saw then how um, Fichte uh, sort of expands upon uh, Kant by really um, radicalizing the, um, the practical angle rather than the theoretical angle. So um, Fichte was less concerned about knowing nature and more concerned about ethical uh, relationships um, between one mind and another mind. So remember for Fichte, it's as though the noumenal realm becomes another free agent that we enter into uh, an ethical community with and perfect one another such that eventually um, this phenomenal realm of nature uh, is gradually um, dissolved so that all that remains is a sort of uh, stage um, designed to facilitate the realization of our freedom as human beings. Now, uh, Schelling, of course, was not at all happy with Fichte's understanding of nature. Schelling uh, wants to ground our mental activity in the activity, the living activity of nature. So for Schelling, we really need to start philosophy um, not with the mind, but with nature. Whereas Kant asks, um, what must the mind be like such that nature would appear to us in the way that it does? Schelling asks, the inverse question. Uh, what must nature be such that a mind like ours is possible, right? What must this cosmos be? What must its ordering principles be such that human consciousness is possible? So for Schelling, we really start with nature. Nature becomes a priori for Schelling. And he builds on some of Kant's work on uh, dynamics, trying to understand the genesis of material bodies. Um, Kant started to sort of um, grok the way that matter, material bodies, are in fact the product of forces. And so it's not so much that you just have material atoms that forces act upon, um, but rather those atoms themselves um, are generated by forces. Schelling carries this even further and wants to consider the entirety of nature as a self-organizing system um, that ultimately uh, originates um, out of these two infinite forces. Uh, an infinite force of expansion, right, moving this way, and an infinite force of contraction that moves inward and um, these two forces being equally infinite um, would just cancel one another out right and we'd be left with nothing so what Schelling will describe is the way that uh, there's a slight disequilibrium uh, between the expansive and contractive forces and this sets off a genetic process an evolutionary process where um, initially, what emerges are um, the realm of space and time, which isn't just uh, 
the, the spatio-temporal realm uh, isn't just sort of taken for granted by Schelling as just forms of intuition of the mind. Um, not only are they not in the mind, but they arise through an evolutionary process. So these infinitely opposed uh, forces first generate space and time here. And then um, they remain in disequilibrium, right? So this process continues. And here, gravity and light emerge. And um, it's quite an extended evolutionary journey here, so I'll bring you with me. Um, and this process uh, of what Schelling refers to as recapitulation continues through a series of stages. Um, and within gravity and light here, Schelling will also describe the emergence of um, magnetism, electricity, and chemistry. Uh, and then finally, we would get to the uh, existence of material bodies. Um, uh, let's say atoms. And then eventually, life emerges. Um, right? So we have plants here animals. And then um, finally, the most potent and intense recapit recapitulation of these infinite, uh, infinitely opposed and sort of polarized forces that constitute nature as a whole leads through the series of stages to its highest potency, uh, which is the human mind over here. So in a sense, in a very simplistic way, um, you might say that whereas for Kant and Fichte, uh, nature is a projection of the mind, um, for Schelling, the mind is an emergent feature of nature. Um, so you can see how radically uh, Schelling has um, transformed the, the transcendental project. And... Um, some would say that he, you know, flatly contradicts uh, or even ignores um, some of Kant's restrictions on what constitutes knowledge, what we can have knowledge of. Um, but from Schelling's point of view, um, he's solving some problems that uh, undermined the Kantian approach, the, the reverse approach, trying to understand um, what mind must be such that nature would appear as it does. Schelling wants to understand the nature not just as an appearance, uh, but as um, the living ground of, of our own consciousness, right? And so in a sense, in order for him to uh, come up with this notion of a series of stages through which um, nature evolves and develops itself, he's taking um, the uh, process of genesis that Fichte described as applying to the mind's own um, you know, process of coming to self-consciousness. And he's, he's instead applying that to nature's process of coming to self-consciousness in the human. Um, so, you know, it's still kind of an anthropocentric approach in the sense that nature itself is teleologically aimed at um, the human being as the sort of pinnacle of its evolution, uh, the sort of highest potency of its own initial, um, you know, unconscious spirit. Nature, uh, Schelling will say that uh, nature is um, unconscious spirit and the human mind is, is spirit become conscious of itself. Spirit and nature, though, of course, are just two different ways of looking at uh, the same dynamic process, right? So, um, yeah, there you have it. I hope that uh, helps elucidate what Schelling is up to.